Hi, this is Dr. Yun Liu from Department of Medical and Molecular Genetics. From this module, we'll start to talk about RNA sequencing experiment. The first lecture, I'm going to talk about uh, the experimental considerations. The first biological question we want to answer in the RNA sequencing experiment is the gene expression analysis. As you can see from this cartoon, and uh, there are two genes, one gene expresses more than the other. This is uh, the gene expression quantification problem. The second level information we can answer is alternative splicing. In this cartoon, you can see there are three exons in this gene. In the first condition, uh, all the three exons are in the final gene product. In the second condition, the middle exon is gone. Although the gene expression level may not change, and actually they generated very different proteins. In this case, uh, that this is a very, very important biological question that we can answer from the RNA sequencing experiment. The third level is uh, the genetic variance on the RNA molecule, because we are not only counting the numbers, but we sequence the original RNA molecule. In this case, you can see that in the reference genome, and it is G allele, but in the alternative, in the, in the RNA molecule we can measure, half of them are G, half are A. And this tells us this location is a heterozygous variance with A and the G alleles. This slide shows the brief overview of the protocol. And we got this RNA molecule that is polyadenylated we can do the DNA or C, uh, RNA or cDNA fragmentation. And after that, and we'll do the library construction from the sequencing protocol. And then we'll do the sequencing. All those ACGTs are being read. And when we do the analysis, some of the sequencing rays are being aligned to the axonic regions. We call it axon rays. Others are being aligned to the junction rays, rays, regions. Why is that? Because when we measure the RNA sequencing, we are measuring the mature messenger RNA, which means the intronic region has already been spliced out. But when we map those rays back to the reference genome, and the intron signal are still there. So this is the reason that we are going to have this junction rays. They are very important, actually, when we do the alternative splicing analysis. Oh, by the way, in this lecture series, I'm calling mapping and uh, alignment the same thing. And uh, basically, we got sequencing rays, we map them back to the genome. The first uh, question that we want to consider experimentally before we do RNA sequencing is how much sequencing, how much uh, genetic material you need to bring to the genomics core facility. This is probably the first question they will ask you how much RNA you can get. I'm summarizing here, so as you can see that in the very early phase, that in the first couple of studies, people require a lot of RNA, sometimes as, many, as much as 100 microgram of total RNA. We all know that's a lot. Today, in most of the protocols, the starting point is 100 nanogram total RNA. We're talking about total RNA, not a messenger RNA here. So normally, this is not a problem for most of the experiment. Uh, and uh, if you got 100 nanogram total RNA, you should be in good shape. But sometimes you say, oh, I only work on a very small proportion of a, a type of cell. And that is very small amount I can get from each animal or studies. Uh, and we can work on 10 nanogram total RNA and by using a different protocol. And sometimes we can go even lower than that. Uh, and as you can see that now we can do single cell RNA sequencing and that will be a much higher sensitive uh, experiment. So the second question that we want to consider is whether how you are going to do the ribosome removal. So ribosome RNA is uh, highly abundant in our systems and depends on different species or depends on different cell types or different tissue. 
and over 90% to 99% of the total RNA we got are the ribosome RNA. Only the remaining part, the messenger RNA part, is normally only less than 1%. So if we go to sequence this total RNA, and over 99% of the rays, sequencing rays, is going to sequence the total RNA. They're functionally very important, but biologically it may not be of your interest. Therefore, before we do the RNA sequencing experiment, we have to get rid of the ribosome RNAs. Normally, there are two different ways to do that. The first part is ribosome depletion, and there are cases to do that. Essentially, we design the probes to target on the ribosome regions, and then we can pull them down. So basically, you put, mix your RNA with the probe together, you put down the ribosomes, and the remaining part will be the RNA molecule you want to further do the sequencing. The protocol to use this type of uh, strategy is called the total RNA sequencing protocol. The second way of doing that is to do the poly A selection, which is a reverse of a ribosome depletion. Essentially, I can either use the poly T as a, a primer and reverse transcription primer to do that, or I can design the probes to just contain the poly T, and then we hybridize that with the RNA molecule, put them down but we only sequence the components are being sequenced, are being put down. And this type of protocol is called mRNA sequencing protocol. So in the next slides, I'm going to compare these two types of protocols, mRNA and the total RNA sequencing protocol. There are several different differences. So the first one is, uh, as I mentioned, ribosome depletion uh, protocol. An mRNA sequencing using poly A capture, ribosome using a uh, total RNA sequencing using ribosome depletion. The second one is uh, mRNA sequencing is good for high quality RNA, while total RNA sequencing can be used for both high and low quality RNA. In the next slides, I'll get back, back to this point to explain why. mRNA sequencing can detect only the mRNA. Actually, there are some non-coding RNAs are also polyadenylated. They will be sequenced as well. Well, total RNA sequencing can sequence both mRNA and the long non-coding RNAs, wh whether they are being polyadenylated or, or not. I got a lot of questions asking me whether total RNA sequencing can sequence the microRNA. The answer is no. Uh, and uh, the reason for that is when we do the total RNA sequencing protocol, there is one portion called size selection. We only sequence uh, for the process the molecule that are a little bit longer. For the smaller ones, they will be separated into a separate tube. You can still do the microRNA sequencing from the same sample using a different protocol, but those signals cannot be read in the total RNA sequencing part. The data feature is also very important. mRNA sequencing normally will give you a much higher quality data than uh, the total RNA sequencing, which will become noisier. And normally, what we can see is mRNA sequencing, most of the sequencing rates goes to the axonic regions. Only a very pro small proportion goes to the intergenic or intronic regions, which we may not be interested in. Well, for total RNA sequencing, and we will have a much larger proportion of the rays goes to the region we are not interested in. So when we design the experiment, when we select the protocols, all these information are something you need to consider. Now coming back to the question, and why mRNA is only for good quality RNA, while well, total RNA can be for both. So this is a RNA molecule, for example. This is a good one, so there is no degradation. When we start our protocol, we will either do the poly A selection or do the uh, reverse transcription using poly T as a reverse transcription primer. But regardless, the entire molecule will be in our product to be sequenced. 
So when we do the sequencing protocols, you can see all those rays are quite equally distributed across the entire molecule. This is a signal we're interested in. However, when your RNA is being degraded, in this case, it's broken from the middle. In the first part, when we do the poly A selection, as you can see that only the second part is going to be put down. And the first part of it, you wouldn't be able to capture it. When we do the sequencing, as you can see that only the second part will be sequenced. The earlier part will not be because there is no poly A directly attached to it. In this case, most of our signals will be central in the three prime end of the molecule. And we will see significantly three prime bias in our measurements. By the end of the day, one of the major questions we want to answer from the RNA sequencing is the quantification of the gene. In this case, the number of rays we detected is very much related to how much this RNA is being degraded rather than how much they are being transcribed. That's why when we do the mRNA sequencing protocol, we want to focus on this part, which is the high quality RNA. When we do the total RNA sequencing, because there is no poly A selection stage, even though these molecules are both being, are degraded, and we will be able to sequence both these regions. So although a lot of sequencing rates goes to other places we don't like, but for the mRNA part, they are going to be equally distributed. That's the reason that the total RNA sequencing can be used on the low quality RNAs. The next consideration is uh, whether we want to do paired end or single end, end protocol. In recent days, because of the development of the sequencing technology, paired end are very, very cheap as well. So this is a less a problem. And uh, normally paired end sequencing will give us a, a higher sensitivity to detect the different level of isoforms. And sometimes it can help us to identify this type of gene fusion or transsplicing signals because we will be able to sequence both ends of the molecule. Overview that RNA sequencing can answer many biological questions, including the transcriptome assembly. This is more for a species that we are not very familiar with. For most of the people that we want to use this to identify gene expression differences and the gene expression quantification. We can actually use the RNA sequencing to study alternative splicing, variant identification, as I explained earlier. And uh, there are some further high-level analysis, including allele-specific expression analysis, RNA editing, and non-coding RNA analysis, including circular RNA. I have to say for the last part that mRNA sequencing is not good for this because those circular RNAs are not polyadenylated. This is all I want to talk about today. Overall, this is experimental consideration when you design an experiment. And from next module, and Dr. Jun Wan is going to dig into detail about different steps of the doing the data analysis for the RNA sequencing. This is Dr. Yunlong Liu. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Thank you.